we just passed the month of April. There's still a global illness going around. We are forced to stay home in order to stop the spread of COVID-19. But most of us uh, have adjusted to the new normal. What's up everyone? I'm Mehmet Kara and you are with my traditional monthly review of the crowd lending market. I'll start my summary with Mintos, but if you want to skip this platform and go directly to the other ones, just click on the timestamps in my description below. By the way, stay till the end of my video because I will share with you what will you receive if you had invested 1000 euro in each of these platforms this month. AMA means mask me anything. I think this is a great initiative by Mintos. We had this for the second time and in case you didn't have one hour to watch the whole uh, video, I summarized it for you. We have uh, adjusted to the new normal. So uh, we have uh, made the necessary changes and uh, uh, in how we operate. So still most of the team, we work from home. It's uh, fully operational. So we, we do everything as we used to. So nothing has changed from that matter. So uh, we adjust, adjusted the strategy as we mentioned last time. So uh, instead of focusing more on the growth, now we focus more on the uh, maintaining the operations and really focusing all attention to our current investor base and also our current loan originators. So what happens if Mintos would go out of business? The most important is information. So in which loans investors have invested, uh, who owns what and so forth. So in case Mintos would go out of business, this information would be made available to the liquidate, liquidator or uh, administrator. And then those uh, would uh, use uh, this uh, to actually manage the process of uh, winding down the operations, which most likely would involve handling it to the third party who can actually manage all the claims and uh, managing the cash flows and so forth. Uh, for that, we use uh, all the information is uh, backed up uh, on a very regular basis. And uh, in general, uh, that's the most important when it comes to. So this issue is uh, is identified. It's basically the issue is with the account statement and how the, um, how the information is portrayed. And there's like one, one thing which uh, we are working on and fixing. Uh, it obviously involves a lot of kind of historic data as well. Um, but uh, as far as I know, it's already tested and should be uh, put in production uh, already this week. This is just how the way information is portrayed. And there's no kind of the database is not uh, affected or anything. So all the data is not uh, is uh, uh, correct. Uh, I'm not sure what, what is meant by shocking news. So. We, we don't think that there's been anything specifically kind of shocking, what we would describe as uh, shocking. Uh, so uh, basically, we believe that we uh, did a rather good or like ordinary uh, job or standard job when it came to managing the situation. Uh, so the moment when we uh, got the information, which uh, was, I guess, on the 25th of March in the morning, that the license has been revoked. So first and foremost, so what we do is really we put the uh, the, the uh, we suspend the suspended the loan originator so that the new investors cannot invest in the loans which are placed on, on the marketplace. I think uh, about the conflicts of interest is uh, we have been uh, putting on the market on the on the website that the. Some of the equity uh, investors overlap with Finko. That hasn't been a secret. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's obviously might uh, seem that uh, it's kind of a lot of conflict of interest, but in, in reality, there's very little. So basically, when we say also when we have the equity overlap of investors and also when people look in those ultimate beneficial owners. So for instance, when we look at the uh, uh, ultimate beneficial of owner, which is uh, Mr. Angus Kessenfeld uh, when it comes to, to Mintos. So sure, we have to report those which own like uh, more than 25% of the uh, of the company, and that is the definition of uh, ultimate beneficial owner. But then, uh, actually, he has less than 50% of the Mintos, and the same goes about uh, Finco. So he has actually less than uh, than 50% of Finco. So this conflict of interest is actually much less than people might. Uh, as far as I know, for Monego, so the liquidator is. Uh, 
uh, basically uh, doing their job and collecting the payments. However, they say that uh, they're not going to make any payments uh, until the COVID situation is cleared out. So we learned uh, the previous AMA session was uh, on the 20th of March, and uh, we learned about the problems with Finco on the only on the 25th of March. So we didn't know a thing about. Uh, uh, any potential problems with, uh, with Finco Armenia. Since the beginning, we had a, a secondary market fee that was like 1%. And then at some uh, moment in 2017, we, defended, uh, we decided that uh, uh, to live up the secondary market and uh, show investors that there's liquidity available, we dropped the fee. So basically, we uh, now reintroduced the fees. As we have seen, we, we don't expect any new loan originators. And also we have uh, an secondary market fee. But now it's time for my personal thoughts and opinion about Mintus and what uh, loans I like and what loans I didn't like. I stopped investing in Finko Ukraine and there are several reasons for that. Also, I stopped investing in Russian uh, in markets from the Russian Federation. Uh, the reason is that the petrol prices, if you don't know, have dropped dramatically. I believe this will weaken the Russian currency and it will make it harder to the Russians to pay back the loans in Euro. So I gave up investing in loans from Albania. I believe that Albania, although they are not in the European Union, is very tight to the Italian market as they are so close, just one sea between the countries. And I believe Albania will be impacted from the Covid situation in Italy. Instead of that, I focused on uh, loans from Bulgaria because they don't have a currency risk right now. The Bulgarian level is fixed uh, to the Euro. And also I focused on loans from the Baltic countries uh, and I prefer just loan originators with A rating. I also like the loans from Vietnam as I believe that, that this country will profit from the COVID-19 situation in China. We already seen that a lot of companies are moving out their production from China and I believe that Vietnam will be one of the profiting countries. I also invested some loans in African countries being like Kenya and Botswana, just to diversify my, my portfolio. The situation about Monego and my portfolio, I still have about 10% loans outstanding from Monego. And as we heard from Martin Suta, we don't expect any payments now during the COVID situation. I like the situation with Warx because I received all of my investments in their uh, forward flow product uh, right away back. Now we move on to the second largest P2P lending platform in Europe, Peerberry. There is no delay in payments, the buyback guarantee is working just as usual. That said, it's crucial to move on and to check what's happening with their biggest loan originator, Aventus Group. Their volume of Polish loans was 30% of the loan portfolio in total as of the April 1st, according to their CEO, Andrzej Trofimovas. On March the 16th, Aventus took a solution to pause issuing new loans in Poland due to unclear situation with the new legislation, which could cause even credit holidays for, for all debtors. Uh, eventually, the legislation was much better than expected and later on the April 8th, they decided to launch back those loans but only for existing clients with a very good cleared history as the situation was still unclear to them. I personally stopped investing in their Polish loans in March and the same applies also for the Kazakhstan loans. First, their national currency is weakened due to the shrunk petrol prices, just like in Russia. And second, there is new legislation that is, could cause a bank holidays. The good news about Avensis is that they were profitable even during the month of March. But now let's look back again at Peerberry. As you can see from this chart, the amount of loans funded shrank by more than 50% compared to February. But uh, there are reasons from both supply and demand sides. First, the loan originators uh, stopped issuing new loans or reduced the amount of the new loans issued. And second, uh, most of the investors, at least those of them with uh, less uh, risk tolerance, withdraw their money. So this is why we don't have cash drag, but also not, not outstanding loans. But so far, Peerberry seems uh, a very stable P2P lending platform to me. 
I move on to Bondora, the oldest P2P lending platform in Europe. Their CEO, uh, Pertel Thunberg, uh, gave a Q&A session and I have summarized this uh, also for you. In terms of the time, when will partial payout stop? I really cannot say and there's no way to say an exact date. What we can do is we can look at the numbers from the previous weeks. So we can see that if we look at, for example, the withdrawals made up two weeks ago, then around 60% of them are still pending. If we take a week earlier, then 50% are pending. And a week earlier, 40% are still pending. So we're seeing that around 10% of payouts are processed each new business week. In essence, Pontora can stay in this situation indefinitely. We've built up our business model in a way that although the revenues and volumes have dropped, also our cost base drops. This is because that most of our cost base is actually variable costs like income, payment processing fees and the like. And when we've had lower originations, also the level of new, uh, the costs related to that drop. We are certain that we can remain profitable throughout the crisis, even if it uh, sustains for a longer period. The return buffer within Go and Grow is big enough to cover for all the accrual of interest of Go and Grow um, or all the accrual of returns of Go and Grow through the next year. And this level is continuously increasing. So it's increasing every single day and even at this time. We were planning a number of new features into the iOS app, but because of the Corona crisis, we had to refocus our teams on new projects. Therefore, there's a delay in uh, releasing new features to the app. However, you can go to the iOS app store, download the Bondor app, and you can test the beta version. We were actually working on a rollout to a new Western European country before March. So because of the current situation, we've decided to um, hold back on this to focus our effort into improving the service, improving the, the product and, you know, to all these various new projects that have popped up because of uh, the Corona crisis. However, uh, in September, hopefully when the situation in, in Europe and the world has, you know, gone down a bit and, and, and the economies have restarted, we're planning to reassess the situation. So we're either going to restart activities for the rollout in the end of 2020, or it's something that's going to be postponed to 2021. Um, next three months, all our teams are focusing on the existing business, improving support. I think it's important to state that since our last live QA session, our support speeds have in, uh, increased a lot. Um, today, the average response time is around eight hours. Um, that includes weekends, um, so it's it's much, much faster than before. And we're continuing to work towards the two, two hour goal that I set out in the last um, QA Live. Second area of our focus is on the communication and the usability of the existing products. Uh, and on a group level, the third area we're focusing on, of course, is about maintaining cash flows from the underlying portfolio. So instead of focusing that much on, you know, growth marketing and, and new originations, our marketing teams are helping the our product teams to make it simpler, easier to make repayments for the customers, to have timely reminders for the customers and provide a very good self-service for the borrowers for them to make repayments or adjust the loan schedules to the new financial realities. When it comes to the rest of the industry, it is very hard to say because the P2B industry is not one. There's a lot of different platforms. You know, there are real estate platforms, um, crowdfunding type of platforms for investments, loan platforms. So each different service is impacted in a very, very different way. Um, and also the second aspect is not all the platforms are the same. I think there's no 
single sort of pathway for the B2B industry, but we'll see over the last next year or so, you know, which platforms are strong, which platforms are weaker, but, you know, our wish is to make sure that, you know, that regulators and investors are are able to sort of um, support the, the, those platforms and investors to avoid, you know, any crisis that we've seen with a couple of other platforms in recent weeks to kind of spill over. I'm really curious what will be the new Western European country in whose loans will be able to invest. But uh, as Pirtel Thunberg said, uh, we'll have to wait for this. Uh, as for my loan portfolio, I have uh, with put a withdrawal request on the 24th of March uh, on Go & Grow and uh, until today 35% of my amount is still not being withdrawn. So the partial payouts are working, <laughs> but uh, like also Per Thunberg said, it's about 10% a week that you get back. The good news is that the amount that uh, you didn't get back from your Go & Grow portfolio is still bringing you interest payments. I'm uh, really positive surprised with the Portfolio Pro results from Bondora. Actually, I expected more loans to be um, non-performing, but so far uh, they are just uh, about 20% of my loans and uh, still I have a very, very good uh, return on investment rate. But Portfolio Pro is a very risky product, so be careful with that. Uh, and as I said uh, at the end of my video, I will make a comparison of what would you get for 1000 euro if you had invested in all of those products. I move on to Reinvest24. It's a crowd investing platform using real estate. Uh, I have invested there in just one um, property. And this month I received my rental income seven days later as usual. I was, uh, I started thinking that I won't uh, receive it. Uh, and surprisingly it was uh, a bit higher than usual. There is one thing about Reinvest24 that I don't like and this is that you can't withdraw a sum that is uh, less than 100 euro. This means if I want to receive my rental income every month, I have to make a uh, uh, deposit with my Revolut account and then I withdraw back my deposited sum plus the rental income. On this way, my account serves me for the purpose that I have created it to have a passive income every month. Now, as I promised, here you see what I have received for uh, each 1000 euro that I have invested in uh, the different platforms across Europe for the P2P lending. Reinvest24 um, was stable and uh, it brought me 5 euro 40 cents. Um, also, the same applies to Bundora Go and Grow, 5 euro 44 cents. Uh, on the next uh, stage is Pierre Berry with having 6 euro 56 cents for every 1000 euro and uh, then we move on to Mintos uh, which is uh, actually my main portfolio uh, there I have 11.27 euro and the highest return on investment for this month was uh, on Bordeaux Mondora Portfolio Pro uh, where I have invested mainly in D, E and F loans uh, and I have received 20.20 20 euro. If I would make a summary of the month of April and what happened on the P2P lending platforms, I would say the situation uh, seems to calm down after the first shock in March. Uh, and uh, we tend to see that most of the platforms have adjusted uh, to the COVID-19 situation, except of one, this is Groupier, but uh, this will be a topic of my next video. So stay home, continue investing, stay healthy and see you next month with my next P2P Lending review.